Okay, so, so far we've covered part one, which was the basic terminology and some of the gross anatomy of the brain. Uh, part two, we talked about some of the lobes and the internal structures and the specific functions associated with them. Part three is really getting to some of the cranial nerves. And this is something that you're going to have to really focus on learning on your own, um, just mainly because um, the cheap brain dissections aren't really, you can't really see many of the nerves. You usually can get the first three, but anything after that, it's really difficult. So you really got to use some of the images that are provided in your textbook and your lab manual to get familiar with all 12 nerves. So like I said, there are 12 nerves and they pretty much arise from uh, different areas in the brain and then exit through foramina um, right, so those holes in the skull, and then they lead to different muscles and um, glands and organs around the face and the body. So there's a mnemonic out there, and you can actually feel free to Google them because they get pretty uh, dirty. But uh, the one that um, you know you can figure out, find one that works for you. But again, you're going to have to spend some time getting familiar to get the 12 down pretty uh, pretty well. So they start, we're going to start from the rostral end or the anterior portion and then work our way caudal or posterior and they go olfactory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vag vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. So the mnemonic that we use is, uh, on occasion, our trusty truck acts funny, very good vehicle anyhow. And again, feel free to Google these because there's ones that are a little bit more memorable out there. But uh, for this class, it's uh, keeping it PG. So we're going to start with talking about uh, each individual nerve um, some of the specific functions associated with it, and some if there's anything really particularly of an uh, interesting note, we'll mention that. So olfactory nerve, also called CN1 or cranial nerve 1, is, uh, as you might guess, is dealing with olfaction or smell. And so some interesting things about this is that, if you remember on the ethmoid when we were learning about that, there's uh, that structure called the cribriform plate. And uh, on that cribriform plate, there's actual cribriform uh, foramina, uh, which are those holes that pass through it. And so there's these facilities or, or kind of tendrils that come off the olfactory nerve uh, that pass through. And so this is actually the only nerve that's exposed to the external environment uh, through your nose um, in the epithelial tissue. And some interesting facts about this is, uh, or one, I guess, is, uh, in an accident, or what we call coup contra coup accidents, where you are driving along, or you're you know you're running full steam into a wall, and you hit a wall, you come to a stop, so your brain sloshes forward, and then you have that kind of whiplash effect, and it slides back. And so what happens is, since these nerve endings pass through this bone, the brain slides over that olfactory bulb and can sever uh, those nerves. Uh, the, the end of the nerve endings is facilities, and what the end result is, is that you can lose uh, your sense of smell. So sometimes you hear during people in car accidents or afterwards they don't they lose their sense of smell, and sometimes they regain it, sometimes they don't, all depending on the extent of the damage associated. But it's because that brain is kind of sliding over the olfactory nerve, which has these um, parts that extend uh, into the external environment. The next nerve, CN2 is the optic nerve and this is going to be the one that is dealing with visual sensory information and if you um, look at it some of the structures to be aware of are you you have the kind of um, you have the optic nerve that runs and then it crosses and that X is called the optic chiasma uh, chiasma is just kind of in this context just an X or a crossing and what it allows is the left side, your left eye to go to your right hemisphere and your right eye to go to your left hemisphere. CN3 uh, is dealing with ocular motor. The next couple nerves really deal with eye movement. Because we're such visual creatures, um, we have a lot of 
muscles and nerves committed to moving our eyes. Uh, we also are very uh, communicative species, so we actually have a lot of nerves going to our tongue as well. So you can be, it's easier to kind of lump these guys into categories when you just kind of think about what are the main functions that they are serving. So specifically, the ocular motor nerve, as you might guess, is uh, going to facilitate movement of the eye um, via the muscles that are associated with the, with the eye. And one of the things to note, uh, if you look at the foramina, uh, in this case, it's a superior orbital fissure, right? So those holes that those nerves are passing for, that's on the sphenoid, right? That's right below the greater uh, wing of the sphenoid. You can actually see that in there, that's big kind of open structure. Well, now we know what nerve is passing through it. Okay, the trochlear nerve, another nerve that is passing through the superior orbital fissure. And again, we're dealing with eye movement. So the trochlear nerve, CN4, again, dealing with eye movement. The trigeminal nerve is, is interesting in that it has three branches associated with it, and they're going to three different parts of the face, right? And so, you're, again, you're dealing with sensory information around the face and also kind of some of those muscles um, that are associated with chewing. And if you look at the foramen that it's passing through, you see uh, the foramen rotundum, the foramen ovale. Uh, these are st structures that we learned again on the sphenoid, so it's all starting to kind of come back together. The abducens nerve, uh, CN6, we're back to a nerve that's passing through the superior orbital fissure, and this one is again dealing with eye movement. Facial nerve, CN7, uh, this is uh, one that kind of passes through uh, a couple spots. One is the internal uh, auditory meatus or internal acoustic meatus. It's it's labeled here, and the, the other one is kind of the, the stylomastoid frame. And so uh, areas that are kind of depending on which way they're oriented, they're going to be dealing with different things. So uh, the facial nerve, as you might have guessed, is is providing um, um, facial the ability for pa facial expressions. Also, a sense of taste on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And the, you know, and the other thing uh, with the facial nerve that I, I failed to mention was the, you know, you see, you ever heard of Bell's palsy? That's something that you see when uh, people wake up and they have facial paralysis, and it's usually only temporary because it's dealing with some sort of uh, inflammation of the nerve or some of the muscles around the nerve that are pinching down on that and, and restricting function and that allows to you in most cases Bell's palsy is is temporary. So CN8 is the vestibular cochlear nerve uh, as you might have guessed by breaking that word down um, vestibular and cochlea so this is going to be dealing with a sense of balance and hearing uh, the cochlea obviously is hearing the vestibular system which we'll be talking about in a few weeks is uh, dealing with sense of balance. And again, this is another one that goes through that big hole, that internal auditory meatus. Right? So if you remember that, that, on, that structure on the temporal bone, that's the one that's kind of forming portions or is associated at least with the ear canal. The glossopharyngeal nail nerve is CN9. Uh, this is going through the jugular foramen, and we're going to see a bunch of nerves that pass through the same foramen. And as you might guess, it's going through the jugular foramen in the throat. It's going to provide control over uh, some sensations in the back third of the tongue, uh, also with swallowing, and it also is involved in some control of blood pressure and breathing. The vagus nerve, CN10 is one that again passes through the jugular foramen and, and it gets the name vagus because it's like a vagrant or like a little happy wanderer and it's wandering all over your body to different organs so it's really interesting in the sense that it goes to your lungs and your heart and your stomach and also into your throat so it provides kind of wide range of functions depending on what portion you're particularly interested in so you know in a nutshell, it's going to help with swallowing and speech, but also with the regulation of your guts and parasympathetic uh, nervous, nervous system. 
CN11 is the accessory nerve, uh, another one that's passing through the jugular foramen. And again, this is going to provide, uh, allow you to swallow and move your head back and forth. The hypoglossal uh, nerve, this is one that's again providing uh, help with swallowing and chewing, uh, but it's also mostly involved with tongue movements. And interestingly enough, than the, uh, compared to the other nerves we talked to, it doesn't go through the jugular foramen, uh, it actually passes through a structure called the hypoglossal canal. So there are a bunch of guides out there um, when you are. Uh, feel free to search the internet for them. Um, but what I want you to do again is ID these structures, be able to identify them on site from an image. Uh, also, really importantly, from the dissections when we get to those. And you should be able to give a couple word uh, function definition. So you should be able to go through the region of the brains, uh, give me a function, the lobes, function, uh, the medulla oblongata, at least a function. And when you get to the cranial nerves, you should be, go, be able to go off an image shown right there and give me, identify the structure or identify the nerve and give me the function of that nerve. And your textbook actually has a much better image than the lab manual. So I would use your textbook, particularly for when you're drawing the cranial nerves, as your guide. All right? And so I'll post some of these guides um, that I found on uh, BB Learn. We'll also post the dissection guide, which is pretty helpful in walking your way through the sheep dissections. Um, and also, it ends up being a good study guide as well.